Hey, welcome back to Chaplain Chat. This is actually part three, and so if you haven't seen part one and two, you probably ought to go do that, the Chaplain Chat. Uh, we've been doing this all in one day. I've been with John. We're, we're at the um, Heritage Family Fellowship Church in Porterville. We just finished uh, that day, the day we're recording this, a next step to freedom. And I had to share with you about it, next step to freedom is a group of people. They, we started this organization in Visalia about a year and a half ago. Now we're starting it in Portable. The, the theme of next, the purpose for Next Step to Freedom is a group of people that gather. We have one passion, and that is, well, we've got a lot of passions, but our purpose statement is to help men and women, when they get out of jail, stay out of jail. And that's what we're about. And John and you and some of the others are, are kind of our helping us get this going in Porterville. That is so exciting. Well, I was talking to John, and John was sharing with us part one. He told us that one of his ambitions before he got sold out for Jesus, uh, he had an ambition of being in the mafia. Yes. And, and then part two, he shared with us his, his uh, ambition. He, he, um, they, moved to, um, they moved to Redlands. He had some con mafia connections and how to get involved. He spent, he spent some time in juvie. He spent some time in jail um, doing everything he shouldn't do, um, but still had that ambition. He got married. He has, a, you know, at that time he had a little girl of a year old, and he was living that lifestyle. And then the uh, the authorities and um, the authorities in Redlands, boy, this is bouncing back. Okay, it's we're back on. The authorities in Redlands said to John, "Okay, John, we got an option for you. You can either um, uh, go to jail here or get out of town." <laughs> and so they actually drove you to the border. You had your family, uh, your your wife and your daughter. <laughs> this is something, and they got you to the borderline, and they said, "Get out of here." That's it. Yeah. And so you came to Porterville, lived with your folks. Your dad had one requirement: if you're going to stay here, you're going to go to church with us. Mm -hmm. There in the church, um, and which is the church we're at today. Yes. That's where you started a relationship with Jesus, and it was real, but not totally committed. Yes. And um, in fact. You still were, you're kind of drifting back into that style lifestyle again. Yes. And uh, and not even being the best type of husband to your wife. Not yours. even being the best. And then something happened one night, and that's where we wanted. This is so. This and God got God got to you in a powerful way. Yes, He did. What happened? Well, what happened is that I was still living this lifestyle, and I started. Uh, doing other things that I shouldn't be doing, uh, selling things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, then all of a sudden, um, I would be gone sometimes days at a time. So I would always come home three, four, five, maybe six in the morning. And one day, all of a sudden, uh, my daughter was waiting up for me, and she's only like one year, one and a half. And she's sitting right there on the steps, and I'm coming up the steps. And all of a sudden, I mean, it, 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 was, it was so powerful. But uh, I believe God used her, and um, when she had said, she, go, she, she yelled at the top of her lungs, the eyes wide open and everything, and she just says, all I want is my daddy back. Mm. And when she said that, mm. that, that pierced my heart. Mm. So I had to go upstairs and wash my face, because it was tears starting to come out of my eyes, and I don't know why. I says, man, I'm not like this, you know. Um, but that's what had happened, and from that point on, uh, the next step that happened was um, I had I had best friend, you know, and all of a sudden he comes up a couple weeks later, tells me I'm going to church. So I push him, and he says, I don't care, I'm going to church. I says, so you really want to go to church? What so happened that the first time that I was going to church, we used to pray every Sunday, you know, here at the church. So I knew that it was Saturday night. I said, all right, we'll go in the morning. I know where they're praying. So when that came up, we walked down there, and all of a sudden, I started getting close to the church because I didn't—I didn't live far from there. I started walking to the church, and all of a sudden, I knew it was the power of God started to do something to me. I started getting closer to the to the uh, Copeland Lumber Building, and I started all of a sudden I started shaking more. And, and what was so so neat about this that God showed me is that once I started getting in, I was I was already trembling, mm -hmm. and all I remember is my pastor coming out. 
um, and he had his arms open, and it was like mm. he he knew mm. it, it was like he knew I was wow. coming, wow. you know, and and um, he embraced me, and all I could do is cry like a baby, wow. man. And I mean, from that point, man, it um, he just told me he goes, you got to c- come back, you know. From that point, it just kind of changed my life. I mean, that that was because now I wanted to go. Wow. And then I got committed. And then, um, um, so then our senior pastor, Juanita, uh, she started teaching and uh, teaching. She, she teaches in the prophetic, but she also teaches the word. I mean, it, it was coming out so powerful. I mean, it was, it's, she was, she's my mom, you know, she's like my, my mother in the Lord, and, and she, she taught me about how to treat a woman, because I wasn't good to my wife, Wow. you know, I was abusive and, and stuff, and she was teaching me stuff that, you know, I didn't know about, Wow. and Pastor Isaac, he would teach me stuff that I didn't know about, you know, and, and with Pastor Isaac, he would teach me stuff through work, I mean, just the stuff you would read scriptures and you would read the word but it was always applied through work and and he taught me how to work and taught me a lot of stuff but then you would be doing something and oh man all of a sudden that that scripture would be revealed to you right there John after that happened how long now would you say you've been active in the body of Christ Uh, 22 years 22 years wow where's your daughter at now my daughter, she's in San Diego. Okay. Um, she joined the military. Uh, okay. She had done four years in the military. I got to meet her someday. Yeah. Yeah. So. John, I am. I got to tell you, this this has been a real joy coming here today, and it really has. And you know, I got to meet you last month, and now this month with next. And I am so excited about who you are and what God's doing in you, and yes. and what what next steps going to be about in community because we're going to have. There's going to be a lot of inmates. They're going to be moving back to Porterville. And man, I can't wait to tell some of them, you got to go meet a guy named John. (laughs) You know? Guys, I want to thank, and I want to thank you for being a part of Chaplain Chat. We went a little longer than we normally did, but you know, this is worth it. God bless, and we'll see you guys next time on Chaplain Chat. All right. (laughs) Okay.